Hello everyone, here is Dr. Ana Dulce and in this video we are going over some of the bones we have in our skull. Let's start with the frontal bone. Guys, obviously, this is the frontal bone. It's all the way to the front, right? This is the frontal bone and then you see that we have a suture right here. And this suture is separating the frontal bone from these two bones which are named parietal bones. And you can see that between the right and left parietal bones, we have another suture right here. Now, if we go all the way in the back, we see this bone, which is the occipital bone. And then we have this suture separating the occipital bone from the parietal bones. Now, these sutures have names. And we have the name of coronal suture for the suture that separates the frontal bone from the parietal bones. The name for this suture between the right and left parietal bones is sagittal sutures because it makes a reference to the sagittal cut. Like the coronal suture makes a reference to the coronal cut. Remember coronal, like you won the Miss Universe and get the corona that goes exactly like this. How wonderful, right? Okay. Now, if we go all the way back, we see here the occipital bone and this suture right here is named the lambdoidal suture and this suture was named lambdoidal because it resembles the greek letter lambda look at this this here and here Remember the Greek letter lambda when you took chemistry and physics? Yes. So this is the lambdoidal suture. Very easy to remember. Now look at this. Here we have another suture. And this suture separates the temporal bone from the other bones that we have around. So this is the temporal bone. We have one in each side. So you have the right and left temporal bones. And I would like you to pay attention to this suture. Can you see that this suture is very neat, very flat when you compare to all these other sutures that are very wiggly? Yes, this is the flattest one. And that's the reason why this suture was named squamous or squamosal suture. Because squamous makes a reference to flat, remember, a squamous cell is a flat cell? Yeah, exactly. So this is the squamous suture. Very easy, you got it. Okay, let's do this. This is the frontal bone. And we know that we have bone features. And bone features are little details in a bone. Now, the easy way to remember details in a bone associated with that specific bone is by saying the whole name, the bone feature, and the bone as one single sentence. And you get the habit of it and you'll be very successful in never mixing up which bone has the specific bone feature. Okay? Okay? So, this is the orbital region, you see, this is the bony orbit, and this is a hole, a hole in anatomy is called a foramen. This is a hole above the bony orbit, consequently, this is the supraorbital foramen of the frontal bone. Then, look here, we have a hole below, inferior to the bony orbit, consequently, this is the infraorbital foramen of the maxilla bone. So this bone right here is the maxilla bone. This one, guys. You see a suture there? That's the maxilla bone. So here is the maxilla. This one that you see here, this is the nasal bone. It's the bone right here that you basically, if you wear glasses, you are resting your glasses right on top of your nasal bone. So these are the nasal bones. And right here, you see the suture. This is the maxilla bone. Now, the maxilla is the bone that our upper teeth insert to. And if we look in this inferior view, this right here is also our maxilla, but you can see a suture right there. You see there? That is a suture right there. And this is the maxilla bone. Right here is the maxilla bone. 
And posterior to the suture, you have the palatine bones. So these are the palatine bones, these two. So anterior to the suture, you see this is anterior. This is anterior because this is the maxilla bone. This is the maxilla bone. Here is the suture. Posterior to the suture, this is the palatine bone. Awesome. Now, here you have another suture, you see? Right here. This is the maxilla bone, the infraorbital foramen of the maxilla bone. Here is the suture. Right here, we have the zygomatic bone. So, this is the zygomatic bone, and here you see another suture, you see? So, after the suture is not the zygomatic bone anymore, then it starts being the temporal bone. So, this is the zygomatic bone, is our cheekbone, okay? And here, you also see the zygomatic bone. You see, look at the suture, and here is another suture. So, this is the zygomatic bone. Anterior to the zygomatic bone, right here, we have the maxilla bone. Remember, this is the suture that separates them. And if you look right here, all this is the maxilla, but this now is the nasal bone that we identified already. And what I'd like you to see is this bone right here. This bone is part of the bony orbit, as you can see. And this bone is where our tears drain, basically. And the word for tears in Latin is lacrima. And that's why this bone right here was named lacrimal bone, okay? So this is the lacrimal bone. Right here you have the maxilla bone, all this. And here is the nasal bone. Now let's move all the way posterior and look at our occipital bone. This is the occipital bone. And we can also see the occipital bone inferiorly. So all this is the occipital bone, you see? And the occipital bone has this huge, magnificent hole. This is a very magnificent hole because passing through this hole will have the beginning of our spinal cord. So when the medulla oblongata starts being called the spinal cord, we have this change. Is basically when we have the medulla oblongata ending and the spinal cord starting. And that's why this hole is very magnificent. And that's why this hole is named foramen magnum of the occipital bone. So this is the foramen magnum of the occipital bone. And right here you have smooth rounded surfaces. In anatomy, smooth rounded surfaces are named condyles. And these condyles are part of the occipital bone. They are details in the occipital bone. So these are conveniently named occipital condyles. Now, one thing that you need to see now is, okay, so here is the occipital bone, foramen magnum, occipital condyles, these smooth rounded surfaces used in articulation. In reality, these occipital condyles will be articulated with the first cervical vertebrae. When you look in this angle, you can see that we have a canal right here. And we also see a canal right there. You see? Okay, right here. So we have these canals. And these canals will take stuff underneath our tongue. So you see, you have the canal, the same canal right here. And also right, I'm trying to find a good angle here right here. So these canals, guys, they are the canals that take stuff below our tongue. And tongue is referred to as glossal. So these canals, this one, and also this one, they are named hypoglossal canal. Hypo below glossal tongue. Hypoglossal canal. Now, we have in the occipital bone this huge hole. But this huge hole does not belong only to the occipital bone. This huge hole is shared between the occipital bone. This side is part of the occipital bone. But this side right here is part of the 
temporal bone. This is the temporal bone, and one of the bone features of the temporal bone is the styloid process. You see this pointy stuff? Yes, this is the styloid process of the temporal bone. And if you look at the huge hole that I was showing, the huge hole is right medial to the styloid process of the temporal bone. Consequently, this huge hole is shared between the occipital bone and the temporal bone. And this huge hole is named jugular foramen. So you have the jugular foramen on this side, and you also have the jugular foramen on the other side. So the easy way to identify the jugular foramen from an inferior view is you check where the styloid process is. You know that the styloid process is part of the temporal bone, styloid process of the temporal bone. You know that the occipital condyle is part of the occipital bone. And then you say occipital condyle of the occipital bone. And the jugular foramen is basically in between them. So the jugular foramen is a shared feature, is shared by the occipital bone and the temporal bone. Now, let's talk about the mandible bone. We talked about the maxilla, and the maxilla is the bone that our upper teeth insert into. And the mandible bone is the bone that our lower teeth insert into. And the mandible, you have these little holes right here. And if you think about it, these are the little holes that philosophers like to think like this. And that's how you do to remember that these holes right here are called mental foramen. And if we remove the mandible, we can see better. So this is anterior view, and now we are looking at it in a posterior view. You see another hole right here, you see? And another one right here. And these holes belong to the mandible. And then you remember that these holes are called mandibular foramen of the mandible. So you have the mental foramen of the mandible and you have the mandibular foramen of the mandible. Also, we see in the mandible, this is smooth rounded surfaces. Do you remember? What I told you that smooth rounded surfaces are called? They're called condyles. Now, these condyles belong to the mandible and they articulate with this structure right here, which belongs to the temporal bone. So, this is how this goes. Here you go. The mandibular condyle of the mandible, this part right here, the mandibular condyle of the mandible articulates, it goes like that, articulates with the mandibular fossa. A fossa is an indentation. Articulates with the mandibular fossa, this part right here, mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. So again, the mandibular condyle, the smooth rounded surface we have here, the mandibular condyle of the mandible articulates with the mandibular fossa. Articulate is when two bones they join like, and you can move them, okay? So the mandibular condyle of the mandible articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. And that's it for this video. Let me know if it was helpful in the comments below.